right, all right, all right, all right. So, I started this video initially, and I was ready to bash Miles. I was ready to go in because I was talking to a friend of mine who felt he was basically Peter Parker and blackface, and to some extent, he has a point. You know, and I'm going to talk about that in this video. So, this is going to be titled "My Problem with Miles Morales." Now, in preparation for this, I decided to pick up Miles Morales' Bring on the Bad Guys. It was a collected edition, and it collects Miles Morales number 7 through 10 and the secret origin of Starling, who we'll get into in a minute, by the way. <laughs> but as a recap, we have Miles visiting his uncle Aaron at the start of uh, you know, the, the graphic novel. After, and it's after an ordeal that Miles has had with Tombstone. He's a familiar villain, um, if you don't know. You know you should check him out. It's actually pretty interesting. So they hash out some differences. Miles asks if Aaron is really out of the crime life, like for real, for real. And Aaron assumes, or excuse me, he assures him he is actually out of it. And they they reconcile. So it's good vibes. It's good vibes. Good vibes. So this gives, you know, the perfect segue into one of the actual issues, which is actually a big issue I have with Miles, or at least his characterization and supporting cast. And one of those is Uncle Aaron. Now, Aaron as a person is cool. I like that he isn't Uncle Ben stand in. He's Miles's uncle. And as someone who has a nephew himself, I enjoy seeing them interact with each other, especially when it's heartfelt. So this is what made it really hard when in the old Ultimate Spider-Man run, when they were in Universe 1610, which they rebu rebooted, by the way, you know, Aaron actually turned on Miles and tried to kill him. Yeah. And I was like, dang, man, it's your nephew. But he was actually a real villain then. You know, when he came to the mar more mainstream Marvel Universe, he 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 became more lighthearted, which they do when you become more mainstream. Things become more, you know, uh, watered down. But, you know, the issue with Aaron isn't his role as Miles' uncle, but his role as the Prowler. Prowler was originally a character from the Amazing Spider-Man number 78 back in the late 60s, 1969 to be exact. His name was Hobie Brown. So, yeah, you heard that right. Hobie Brown. So he's one of the first, I'll say, transfers from Peter's supporting cast in the Miles, the Prowler character anyway, not necessarily um, Aaron Davis. But even without it being Aaron Davis, you got it with Hobie Brown because Hobie Brown was in Into the Spider-Verse and he was Prowler. So, you know, that's another example. And this is the problem that's played Miles since his inception. You know, not even just on the villain side, because originally Miles' supporting cast was Peter's supporting cast. You had 1610's Jessica Drew, Aunt May, MJ, Maria Hill, Kangaroo, and I think even uh, Shadowcat, too. You know, that was just the name of few. You know, back in Ultimate Spider-Man, there was also Venom, Electro, and you had Miles battling Green Goblin, something he does again and bring on the bad guys in the collected edition who's a classic Spider-Man villain, but it's minus the emotional complexity that Peter, Norman, and Harry have built up over the years, which is a problem. See, all of these people were Peter's entourage, and if Miles is his own character, why is the bulk of his cast the people from Peter's past? In terms of his allies, these people had continuity with the 616, with updated roles in the 1610, and they were integral to Peter's backstory and development as a character. What made Spider-Man's villains great were their demonic appeal and their personal relationships to the protagonist. You had Eddie Brock, who was a professional rival to Peter, Harry, who was his best friend, and Norman was the father to Peter's friend. Even if you go further down the long line, excuse me, and you look at Mr. Negative, he was a community leader. Aunt May worked under him and Peter helped out. You know, there's a whole like fluid ecosystem in terms of his his villains. There's a lot of this makes a lot of emotional investment. But when you copy and paste Peter's role gallery and his friends and his villains and, you know, you shoehorn in characters, this case being Miles, it becomes redundant and it's unnecessary. Because then why didn't you just keep Peter? You're just trying to appeal to another fan base, you know, and this carry over even in the 616 universe. You have Miles picking up affections with Gwen Stacy. So literally he got with Peter's sloppy seconds. And he's like the second Spider-Man. You know, it's, 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 she's from another universe, but let's be real. It's Gwen Stacy, whatever. So, or if he's not dating Gwen Stacy, he's dating a legacy character like Starling. And Starling is the granddaughter of Tomes, who was the vulture. 
So it's you know it's, it's a soulless dynamic. And if the copper colored Spider Man doesn't have soul, then what's the point? Like really? So this translates also to one off characters. Like they had a Dominican black cat from Earth nine three seven five, and I know she's not a main, but still, you know, they just swapped her. They just color swapped her. So. The writers have attempted to flesh out Miles' roles, you know, with the assessor, who's introduced in this collected edition, Bring on the Bad Guys. And on the second run, he actually is pretty menacing when you think about it, because I, ex- I did not enjoy this graphic novel the first time I read it. But going through the second time, I was like, oh, that's not that bad. You see the assessor, he, he actually, when you think about it, he kidnaps a teenager, and he performs, like, these dangerous experiments in order to gauge Miles' abilities and Miles Morales' Bring on the Bad Guys. Now, you might not even know that Miles is a teenager by the way he looked. He looked, that man cut up. You know, he like, hey, Diesel, man. You know what I'm saying? He he, he, he work out. Yeah, but he is like, he's in high school. So, you know, I mean, like, he this dude, the assessor, just kidnapped a child and tortured him. So, he's actually pretty messed up. I think in, in later editions, he made clones of Miles, which, you know, that is another uh, copy and paste the clone saga they put into that, but we're going to get back to that. So, besides the assessor, you also have Raneem Rashad, who is completely crazy and a little flimsy when it comes to motivations, but as I said, she's crazy. So, that's not un- uncommon with Spider Man villains for them to just be irrational, you know, and, you know, just overall nuts and to target Peter for small reasons that he ain't got nothing to do with. They just evil. They just crazy. So she is her own character, Raneem Rashad, you know, also known as Ravel. And but and she's not someone from Peter's side of things. So, you know, Miles got his own villain, which is good. So I'm basically saying that Marvel like reuses old storylines and characters, which we all know from Peter's mythos and they place Miles in it. And this is a scene where you have them adapt, adapt into Clone Saga the symbiotes, you know, uh, was it absolute carnage, Miles Morales, uh, even like villains using familiar visage like Aaron did with the Iron Spider suit, or even when Venom killed Miles' mom in the sixteen ten universe. You know, it's just it's just unimaginative. And while movies like End of the Spider Verse and TV shows like Mar- like excuse me, Marvel's uh, Spider Man attempt to flesh out Miles, he's kind of just a clip on in Peter's world sometimes. You know. So moving on for that, there are definitely things I like about Miles because, like, look, I'm also a bronze copper colored man, you know. So when Miles has his own supporting cast, it's actually genuine, you know, with his interactions with Genki and his own family, I think is like the strongest connection he has that really makes him stand out because Peter has a dad. He has a mom. He has a sister. He has his uh, and Peter does have his biological family, but these are Miles parents. Peter didn't have any parents. So, you know, he had his aunt and uncle. So, you know, Miles has genuine moments of relatability and originality because of those supporting characters. So I, I especially liked it when Jeffrey Davis. Oh, I can't I can't forget about Judge. Yeah, I can't forget about Judge. They didn't put him into the Spider-Verse. But I, you know, Judge my dude, Judge my dude. But anyway, I, I especially liked it when Jeffrey Davis, Miles' father, explains why he let Miles have his mother's last name, Morales. Because Jeffrey wanted to free Miles from the constraints of his grandfather's past. Because Miles' grandfather, by his father's admission, was not a good man. And he wanted Miles to be free from that. Especially because he was already a target. You know, being a a bronze copper colored man. Now, if only Marvel would listen to their own characters and have Miles branch out a bit, you know? And yeah, I get that there's nothing new under the sun and everything is just a remix of what came before. You know, even Spider-Man himself belongs to the trickster archetype. You see that throughout cultures and history. And the idea of Spider-Man isn't really original. You know, you have the Native American Spider-Man. I think it's a, a, a Lakota legend. I can't recall the tribe, but there is a Native American Spider-Man story. And he's not like swinging around bit like, you know, in trees or nothing like that, which would actually kind of be cool if you think about it. But, um, no, he's not swinging around trees. He's actually, he's just name is Spider-Man. And we even, if you don't count the Native Americans, you've got a Nazi from Ashanti folklore in West Africa, you know, which Marvel showed a version of with uh, Kwaku, a Nazi, 
which I thought was cool. They actually, you know, they, he's the original Spider-Man, which is true. Anansi the Spider and Spider-Man predate Peter Parker as Spider-Man. You know, we just don't know that because people don't study history. And this is Greco-Roman culture, which is all about presenting a certain image. So, but that's not a here and there. In a nutshell, you know, that's my issue with Miles. A lot of plot lines with him are uninspired. You know, you got the Clone Saga, you know, which is a rehash of the Clone Saga. <laughs> uh, you know, you got Marvel could easily adapt new characters and give him his own lane. Like they did with his Cesar, like what they did with Ranin Rashad, Rabble. And they kind of did it too. No, no, no. See, they even messed it up with the Tinkerer. In the the, the um the Marvel Spider Man two, yeah. So, you know the Tinkerer, what was her name? I can't remember my name right now. But she was basically just a gender swap version of the other Tinkerer. So, you know he need, they need to give him his own lane. You could say he has his own lane with characters like Ultimatum, the Assessor, and Rabble. But there's too much overlap with Peter's world, in my opinion. Now, while Miles does have his own power set family members, and a couple of villains, I still don't get the sense that he's his own Spider-Man. So, he gonna have to get on wire here. Also, man, there's a, there's a, I gotta, before we go this, the slang they use, they have Miles say y'all, we say y'all, you know, I get that. But he don't use any Brooklyn, like, why don't he use any Brooklyn lingo? You know, and also, or just like, I hate saying black lingo, like slang, I know there's a lot of terms they could use, but the writers, man, they just don't know how to talk like a person of color. So, yeah, that is a small little caveat. Yeah, I thought that was like relevant. So, they need to get, I don't know, they need to get a black dude to write Miles, like for real. So, I don't know if the black dude has ever written Miles, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But that's my issue with Miles Morales. So, peace out. <laughs>